What is going on? This is the Washington Football Report. This is also this is the YouTube video and the podcast. So if you're listening to this on the podcast, you're just you're just listening to it. If you're listening, if you're watching on YouTube, you're you're actually seeing my screen. On my screen is the rundown for the NFL schedule. This is the first actual podcast I'm doing under the name Washington Football Report. I used to have a podcast under the name um, Redskins Rant. Um, and I forgot all about it. And I was looking this week, a couple days ago on how I could post this, uh, a podcast or a, a rip of all my videos as a podcast and come to find out I can do it pretty easily. So I'm going to do that from now on. Um, every video will now be posted as a podcast, unless it's something that's specifically like you're watching a video, like a game film breakdown, you can't really do a podcast on. Like if you look, if you actually have a game film of a video of a game and you're doing that, can't do that. But Obviously, if I'm talking about games and, pre and predictions and things like that, I can very easily do that um, on here. So I actually did this already one time, and I'm a little frustrated because it did not record audio. So hopefully this one has the audio. If not, you're probably not going to hear it. Um, so yeah, we're going to do the rundown plus some bold predictions, and I got some nice little background music. And turn down to a smidge. There. That should be good. So, uh, the first game on the docket for the Washington football team is the Chargers versus Washington. Now, I'm going to have a prediction video either on Friday or Saturday. Um, so, I'm not going to get into too much detail about what Washington's going to do in that game, but I do think Washington will win the matchup against the Chargers. Um, going on to the job, I'm not going to give any more information away about that game. I have a full breakdown of what we need to do to win. Um, Washington versus Giants. I don't think the Giants have done enough to improve and be better in Washington. I think we were better than last year. They just, they just got lucky. Um, we went through some um, quarterback turmoil, and I think that that resulted in losing to them. But I do not think they were a better team than us twice at all. Uh, one, I, I'm not getting into the reasons why. Um, they beat us, uh, but we are a better team. We are, we're going to beat them. A short week, I think our defense is better than uh, theirs, and I think our offense is on par with theirs. I just think we're just a better overall team. We're better coached. I think our, co our Ron Rivera have us better prepared than Joe Judge is going to have them prepared. And we don't have all the turmoil Joe Judge is apparently having with his team. Um, so that's the Giants. <clears throat> Washington versus the Bills. So at that point, Washington will be 2-0 <clears throat> going to the Bills game. I think Bills will beat us. Bills are a very well-rounded team. It's our first away game. Um, they have a really good fan base, good following. And I just, I just think that they're going to be at a point where they want to uh, make a statement or make a, a good statement. I just think they're a little bit better than us all around. Uh, they're the top, they're a top five team in this league. They're number five, I believe, this year. So uh, yeah, they're going to give us, the, they're going to give us the works. Um, and I think it'll be a close game, but I think we'll end up losing this game just because we just, they're just a little bit better, a little more established. I think we're about a year away from being like a Bills caliber team, like being that good. Um, I just don't think we're there yet. So we will we will lose this game, and I'll, I'll put us at 2-1. and one. Washington Falcons. Now, Falcons, I don't think, are a bad offensive team. I think offensively, they're just as good as they've always been. Um, they have Matt Ryan so for between four and 5,000 passing yards pretty much every year, 30-plus touchdowns. He's got Kyle Pitts attitude. He's got Calvin Ridley. He's got a decent running game and uh, Mike Davis. Uh, Mike Davis was a huge step up, step in for uh, Christian McCaffrey last year. Turn the volume down just a little bit more. There we go. And um, yeah, I think their offense is gonna be pretty good, but their defense, Dan, Dan Quinn, and that defense uh, didn't really do much last year. I don't think they're gonna do much this year. So with that defense, uh, I'm. I just think Washington's got, it's going to be a shootout, and it'll be one of those games where Ryan Fitzpatrick's going to show why we brought him in. He's a quarterback that can win a shootout once in a while. And I just think our defense will slow their offense down enough, and our, our, our offense will be too good for their defense. So I have the Washington beating the Falcons. So that puts that 3-1. and one. And then Washington plays the Saints. Saints are no longer the, the Saints of old with Drew Brees or the Saints of new with Jameis Winston, and they don't have Mike... They don't have Mike Thomas. He's out, and I think he comes back the game after our game. So he's out right now at this point in the game, and um, important this point in the season. And we're three and one, and I think we get the four and one playing the Saints. I don't think they have enough 
could actually beat us. I don't trust Jameis Winston quite enough. And I think our defense is going to get after him, make him make mistakes. And, uh, yeah, I think he's going to get – I think he will do better this year than he's done in the past couple years because Sean Payton's a better coach than he's had in the past. But, um, yeah, I think the Saints are going to – we're going to beat the Saints. So we're at 4-1 at that point. Now, I do think there is a formula for us to beat the Chiefs. Um, I think there's a way we can beat the Chiefs. It's going to be – I need to see if it's going it can be executed by someone else first. Um, for example, the Chiefs play the Cleveland Browns um, uh, first game of the season this year, uh, first week. And I think Cleveland's going to win, but they have to play a certain way. They have to ground and pound, control the clock, really limit mistakes, get out from a home, so on and so forth. And they have the they have the capability to do that. We're pretty similar to them in our build. Um, so they should do the same. If they do it, I might be a little more confident in Washington getting this game. But right now, I think Washington, uh, they're – I think they, if they got in a shootout, I think Mahomes is going to win a shootout. That's what he's made for. So, by the way, if I haven't already told, said this already, so this is video slash podcast. Um, I also have a podcast, what's called the NFL Weekly Rundown, where I run down every game and get my prediction for every single game, if that's what you would prefer. Hold on one second. There we go. I put this on Do Not Disturb. Why does it keep going? Mess? Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, I, so if you are interested in just hearing like the rundown of like every team, not just Washington, go go check out that podcast. It's the NFL Weekly Rundown. That's what's called. I basically go through and if you ever do like ESPN like pickems, I go through ESPN pickems and I pick who's gonna win. Um, and I explain why I think everything's gonna win and, and, and the reactions to some of the games. I'll do some of that. Um, but yeah, Chiefs Washington. I think Washington gets a loss here, so four and two. And Washington plays the Packers. Now, honestly, Washington in the last like couple years, other than the other than one game in the playoffs, we actually have a pretty good track record against the Packers. I don't know what it is, but we just know how to find a way to beat Aaron Rodgers. We know how to find a way to get after him. We know how to find a way to limit him, um, make mistakes, get him to make mistakes, so on and so forth. So Washington has a good track record against them, but I, in this in this situation, I'm going to say Washington's not going to win. It's at Packers. It's uh, him and his two uh, two co partner or t- uh, you know his two teammates that are kind of as pissed off at the organization as he is are a little out for blood this year. So I think they they beat us. I think they beat us. And like I said, I see a formula for how we can beat them. But I, if I'm going off my gut instinct right now, his gut instinct is we lose this one. Um, so that's uh, that's number that's uh, four and three, and I think we go in and beat the Broncos. I think the Broncos are built pretty similar to us. Um, I think Teddy Bridgewater is not going to do bad, but I think Washington finds a way to win this game either by grinding it out or we expose some of their defense or something like that. We just find a way to get the W here, um, and five and three. Uh, so Washington's at five and three going into the to the break. Um, we get a bye week, and then we get a week to prepare for Buccaneers. I actually think we're going to beat the Buccaneers. I think we're going to beat them. I think Buccaneers are going to do it. Last year, the Buccaneers, if you were paying attention, started off kind of cold. They they were inconsistent. They weren't on the same page, and then they they got hot right at the right time, and then they got hot going into the playoffs near the end of the season. I think it's going to be the opposite this year. Um, that's why I don't have them going to the Super Bowl. Then we're going to start off super hot with uh, good chemistry and everything, and then they're going to, um, and then they're going to start cooling off. And I think this is one of the games. Gonna, the, the base is just going to be at the point where they just want to um, just get through every game and get to the playoffs. And we're going to be one of those teams that's going to be out for blood and looking for a little bit of revenge last from last year. And we're going to beat them. Um, we're going to beat them like we should have done last year. Um, so yeah, I think we'll get we'll catch them at a bad time. I guess we're like a trap game. We're not really a trap game. We're not a bad. It's like Steelers last year. We were a trap game for them. They they, they didn't take us seriously, and Washington was out for blood. We were just just getting hot. Uh, I think things similar things going to happen this year. Um, so that puts us at six and three. Panthers is at Panthers. So Ron Rivera is going to play his old old teamy coach, and I think Washington gets after it. I think Washington gets another win here. So this puts us at seven and three. I think we're gonna uh, we're actually gonna move the ball on that defense. Last year with Taylor Heineke and the bad weapons we had late in the game, he moved the football. And I think if we started the game, we'd have won pretty handily. Um, we forced turnovers and everything. And I just 
I don't think the team's going to have quite enough just to beat up, to score on us, and I think Washington will be able to put up enough points to win this game. And I just think we're better coached as well. So that's the Panthers. That puts us at uh, is that eight and three. Yeah, eight and three. Or no, seven three, seven three. We got six and three when we beat the Buccaneers. I think we lose to Seahawks. The Seahawks are going to come in town. Um, we always seem to have a bad track record against Russell Wilson. There's sometimes we beat him, and a lot of times we don't. And yeah, we're going to face Russell Wilson. Um, DK Metcalf. It's going to be a great test for our defense. It's possible we can be. I can see like scenarios how we can beat every team. But I just see Russell uh, just getting a one more extra play, or that, this will be a game where Fitz will get a turnover in a crucial spot, and it will cost us the game. I just see that happening. I mean, he's not going to have a lot of those, but this is going to be one of them, where he'll he'll get in a duel with uh, Russell Wilson, and Russell Wilson is just better than, than Ryan Fitzpatrick, um, and we'll end up losing this game. So that puts us at seven and four. Um, going into the Raiders game, the Raiders are. I actually think the Raiders aren't a bad team. I just don't know. I, it's one of the things where, like, you see, like, a lot of decent things with it, and you just don't know what the problem is. Like, you see that they have a decent quarterback. Derek Carr is a very solid quarterback in this league. I think if Washington had Derek Carr, I'd be very confident in Washington's quarterback ability, just like I am with Fitzpatrick. Um, they have good running backs. They have jo- uh, Josh Jacobs, and they have uh, Kenyon Drake. Uh, so they have two good running backs. Uh, one's really good catching out the ball in the backfield. Um, they have a good tight end. They have one of the best tight ends, in, uh, one of the best up and coming tight ends in the league in Waller. Uh, that guy is going to uh, really, really uh, put up some numbers this year. And then they have these receiving weapons. Um, and then you look at it. I, I guess their offensive line is rebuilt, so that's where maybe the one of their uh, one of their holes are because they had a good offensive line and then just like disintegrated it. And then they also have, um, a, I guess, a decent defense. Not a great defense, but decent. So you really just can't pinpoint. What really the problem is with this team, um, and the music just cut out, okay. And the, uh, I think Washington is just a well more well-rounded team. Like you, It's one of those teams that has a lot of things going on, and then they just they just can't put it together, and it's just not a cohesive. I think what's going to happen is the Raiders this year are going to try to tank, and uh, um, John Gruden is going to actually try to get his quarterback this year, and he's going to trade away Derek Carr eventually. And they're going to tank and try to get a quarterback. I think that's what's going to happen. That's what John Gruden has won to do for years, but the team's just been just good enough to avoid that. And I think that's what's going to happen. So Washington gets a win here. Now we're, I believe, we're eight and four. Eight and four. And now we come across our, our division. I'm going to make this very clear. I do not think any team in this division has, one, is has improved drastically at all. Two, uh, other than us, um, has not improved enough that they sh- that they should be favored against us in any games. Um, completely honest. Uh, let's go. Let's look over coaching first. Washington has Ron Rivera, established coach, been Super Bowl, um, turned around the team last year, won the division first year. Joe Judge it didn't look bad last year, and I thought he was on he was on the come up when it comes to coaching. But I also look back at it now, and he's starting to have some division, some um, tension in the locker room, so to speak. So that's a problem he's having, and he's going to have that problem, like, extensively. And we don't know how that's going to manifest. Uh, and then you look at Mike McCarthy. Don't even get me started. Mike McCarthy is the worst court, worst coach to ever win Super Bowl. I had a debate at work the other day. He is the worst coach to ever win Super Bowl. He rode the coattails of a very good quarterback and a decent defense and got himself a Super Bowl ring. And he, he like, he lied about his interview with <laughs> – I, I don't want to get into that. It's not a video about – I could do a whole video about the things that Mike McCarthy does horribly. But, um, and then you got, I don't even know the coach uh, of the Eagles. I don't even know his name. So he's not better than Ron. So Ron's got, Ron, we have the best coach. We have the best coach. And, okay, look at defense. We have the best defense by far. Um, I think Giants have a decent defense, but we have the best defense by far in this division. Giants, hell no. Eagles, hell no. Okay? Uh, and then if you look at, like, the improvements in the offseason, what, where did the giant? Where did the Cowboys improve? Cowboys, okay, they got a defensive coordinator. But let me just tell you this: uh, Dan Quinn is a might be a better defensive coordinator than they had. Um, the Falcons the last few years have not exactly been a great defense. Just just throw that out there. They have not been a good defense by any stretch of the imagination. So that's not exactly a roaring indictment for, or a roaring uh, uh, like. Uh, it's not. It's not something that like you know gets me excited. Or, uh, like really sways me when it comes to this discussion. Um, so Dan Quinn's not exactly a huge improvement. It's an improvement, but like a slight one. Uh, I mean, anything's better than the defense had last year. I guess if you want to go that route. 
Um, let's look at the other improvements they had. Um, they did sign Dak, but they pay, they're paying him $75 million this year and like $40 million every year after that. I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to build the rest of the team very well, and I really don't think Dak... I think he's good. I just don't think he's going to be that... I just don't think he's going to be enough to put them over the top consistently. Um, he's gonna, everything's going to have to rely on him, and eventually that's not going to last very long. And we don't even know if he's playing game one, first off. But, um, I mean, I think by then he'll be playing um, by this game. And I, he didn't really add anything else. They didn't add any offensive weapons, really. Uh, they did get some offensive linemen back, but they're also coming off injury, so are they going to last? Is there any wear and tear? I don't, I don't know. Um, if they have their offensive line from two years ago, they're going to be pretty good offensively, uh, on the offensive line at least. And Ezekiel Elliott, they still have him, and he was a fumbling problem last year and a turnover problem. So I don't know if that's uh, a roaring indictment or a roaring uh, um, endorsement, I would I would say, for the Cowboys to say that they're drastically improved. They, get, they, did, get, they did draft some good defensive players. Micah Parsons is a stud. Uh, Jarrell Cox is a decent backup linebacker, and I think they drafted a pretty good corner. I just can't think of his name And the guys that got in free agency are all coming off ACLs and Achilles tears. So I don't think there's going to be a lot. I, I think it's just guys that got cheap because of how much money they're spending on Dak. And, yeah, they're just. No, I just don't see this happening. I don't see it being effect, a good. They may win a game or two in a shootout, but they're just not going to be able to defend. And it's just, I think there's too much put on Dak. Um, <clears throat> and moving on, if you think about the Eagles. Eagles, <laughs> okay, Eagles have no certainty to me. There's no certainty at coaching. There's no certainty at quarterback. There's no certainty at running back. Um, they have no, there's the quarterback situation. Let's go to quarterback situation first. Quarterback situation, they have a quarterback that they have, that they drafted last year, and they've already traded for a backup because they're not, they don't have any trust in them. Gardner Minshew is a starting quarterback in this league, and they traded for him to back up their quarterback because they don't trust him. Okay? They don't trust him at all. So we're in a, situ a situation where they have a quarterback that's just got undermined and a backup quarterback who's not bad, but, I mean, I think he'll probably be better than Jalen Hurts if you put him in. But there's not certainty at the quarterback position. Now look at running backs. If you look at the running backs, um, there's no, I don't think there's a running back on this roster that is in contract for next season. Not one. Not one quarterback is on contract to be uh, able to play next year. Uh, he's, uh, you got, <laughs> um, and in receiving core, I mean, there, you, you did draft Devontae Smith. He's not bad, but other than that, but Alshon Jeffrey, he hasn't been consistent the last few years. The only thing I will say you got going for you offensively is you have two good tight ends. But your offensive line's aging. It's not very it wasn't good last year, it's not gonna be good this year. So you got two decent tight ends in Goddard and Zach Ertz. And then defensively, your defensive line's solid, but beyond that, everything else on that defense is horrible. It's not very good. And you're rebuilding, they're in a rebuilding mode specifically. And um, I just don't see Washington, I just don't see Eagles being anywhere near contenders um, when it comes to this division. And then Giants are the most contender-ish um, team that's on our, in our division. Um, Washington, or I'm sorry, uh, the New York Giants still have uh, Daniel Jones, who's a decent enough quarterback, but the problem is he turns the ball over a lot. Um, they added weapons for him, so there's no excuses as to why he does or does not succeed. Um, there's no, yeah, there's no, uh, I mean, they gave him weapons. They, gave, they signed, uh, who they signed? Um... I can't his name right now. Play for the uh, Detroit Lions. It's not Marvin Jones. It's the other guy. Uh, Golden Tate. I can't, think of his, can't think of his name right now. They signed a receiver to make him better. They also signed a Kyle, a Kyle Rudolph tight end. And their offensive line is another year bet, older, so I don't know if they're better or not. But they don't even have the right tackle they drafted last year um, starting. That's how bad their draft is when it comes to linemen. So, and their defense, I'll give their defense credit. Defense is pretty good last year, and they've added some decent pieces. So their defense has gotten better, but I just don't think they're better than us. So when I run down the, the last five games, we're eight and four, I believe, going in this game. Eight and four. And Washington will beat the Cowboys, so nine and four. Beat the Eagles, 10 and four. Beat the Cowboys again, but I, actually, I'll, part, I'll count that one as a loss. So uh, uh, 10 and five. I think we beat the Eagles again, 11 and five. And the Giants game, it's going to come down to whether or not we are, um, you know, and if we're already, like, clinched the playoff spot in the division, I think we'll rest starters. Um, but if we have a spot to go for a, a top seed, we're all might play. It's going to depend on that. So I think we'll be 11-5 going in this game, and we're going to be 12-5, and 
which is what actually I saw a prediction the other day that uh, a, a legit a, a different Instagram. It's not like a Washington one. It's just they just do NFL in general. Um, projected us going 12 and five, and if we have to play this game, we're gonna be 12 and five. If we don't play this game, we'll be 11 and six. Um, straight up, I think there's a lot of things that. Washington has done right this offseason. We've had probably one of the best and most successful offseasons in the history of our team. And uh, I just, going forward, I think we got a lot of things that were going for us. And 11 and, five, 11 and 6 or a 12 and 5 season would just put the icing on the cake and caught and cap off one of our best offseason or our best offseasons. Um, and if you look at it going forward, I, I have a couple of predictions, um, a couple of bold predictions. I think Ryan Fitzpatrick will get about 4,700 passing yards. 35 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. And in doing so, um, he will be, he will not win it. Don't, don't miss you my words. Miss, 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 <laughs> mistake my words. He will not win an MVP. Don't even think I'm saying that. He will be in the discussion because it's fine. It's Patrick. When he does well, he gets talked about. Okay. <clears throat> so he'll be in the discussion for um, MVP, but he will not win. He'll get like maybe fifth in the votes or whatever, but he will be a, a, a candidate for MVP. But he will not win it. If he wins it, that would be. If he wins it, that means Washington's probably at like 14 and three or something, and he's got over 5,000 passing yards if he wins MVP. But I, he would have to put up a stellar numbers to outdo some other quarterbacks in this league, and he'd have to be up to like 40 plus touchdowns, which is possible, I guess. He he, he put himself in that situation. Um, but yeah, I, I don't see that happening. But the the MVP aspect, but I see him being an MVP candidate because of all the weapons he has red zone and uh, targets and things like that. Um, next one, Antonio Gibson. Antonio Gibson, I predict, predict will have almost 2,000 total yards of offense. He'll have about 1,400 to 1,500 rushing yards and have about six to 700 run, or, uh, receiving yards. He'll have double digit touchdowns. He'll probably have about mm, like 12 rushing touchdowns and three, um, and he'll have three uh, passing touchdowns, receiving touchdowns. I think this year you're going to see a lot more from Antonio Gibson. Last year, teams loaded the box on us. Um, they really did. If you don't think they did, and you're kind of wrong here. But teams loaded the box on us. They doubled up on McLaurin and said, go ahead, throw with someone else. And we had no quarterback that could consistently throw. So there was not the threat of throwing. So everything that Gibson got last year, he got it with a stacked box and uh, just not the best situation to be in if you're running back when it comes to getting yards. So, um, yeah, I think Antonio Gibson is going to do a lot better this year. Because of our, our deep threats, people are going to play back. Because of our, um, because of our uh, receiving weapons, they're not going to stack the box. Um, so they're gonna get, you're going to get a lot more uh, six, seven-man boxes that he can run on and make a guy miss and really bust him open. I think he's going to get a lot more yards this year. And definitely get a lot more touchdowns. I think I had like 10 touchdowns last year. And uh, he only played 10 games. So this year, he's definitely going to add to that. He's going to add big time to his numbers. And he's going to get probably 12. I think he'll get 12. And then he'll probably get another three or four touchdowns at receiving. So, yeah, that's what I see, that's what I see Antonio Gibson doing. McLaurin will get 1,400 receiving yards. And he'll get probably about eight touchdowns. He, he got six his rookie year, four last year. He'll probably get eight. The problem is with, with him getting a touchdown. Usually his touchdowns are like deep deep bombs down the field or like 20-plus passes. He doesn't get a lot of red zone targets. And, uh, yeah, he doesn't get a lot of red zone targets at all. And in doing so, he kind of gets limited in red zone. So he has, to, he has to get a touchdown from 20 or more yards away, which he can do. But he didn't do a lot of that last year. And I, I, I think Fitzpatrick will open up more for him this year. So he'll get about eight. He might get as high as 10 touchdowns, but I think he'll get eight. That's my educated guess. He'll get eight. Logan Thomas will get between seven and 800 receiving yards, and he'll get 12 touchdowns. He, he will get a lot of red zone targets. A lot of the red zone targets will come his way from, um, from Fitzy. And, um, yeah, that's where most of his targets going to come from, uh, from, uh, or targets going to go in the red zone is, uh, Logan Thomas. I think someone will go to Antonio Gibson. You might get one or two to, to Steven Sim, or Cam Sims, maybe to Humphreys because of his quick slants and stuff like that. But for the most part, um, I, I think 
the big red zone target is going to be, maybe even like a couple of John Bates or Samus Reyes, but the big red zone targets are going to be to um, uh, Logan Thomas, and he's going to get about 700, between seven and 800 yards of receiving. He got 600 and some yards last year. So um, I project I project him getting you know, a little bit uh, uh, trending up a little bit more. He'll be targeted more. I think him and Fitz, for what I've heard in camp, have very good chemistry. So I don't think that's going to be. I don't think. I don't know. I'm going to sit there and be cocky and say, "Oh, he's definitely going to get that." I just don't think their chemistry. I think their chemistry is good. I think they have good chemistry, and that's going to particulate on the field. I really don't have any predictions for anyone else. I mean, I think Curtis Samuel, if he's healthy, will get about 800 receiving yards, maybe another uh, six touchdowns. So if you're looking at it, 12 touchdowns from Logan Thomas. You have three touchdowns from McLaurin. There's 15. There's half his touchdowns right there, or more than half his. Uh, now, not quite half. It's 35. Um, McLaurin will get it about eight, so there's 20. And then you're going to have another 15 spread out between McKitsick. You're going to have a couple more spread out to, uh, to Curtis Samuel. Uh, Deami Brown's going to get a couple deep ones. Uh, Humphreys, Cam Sims, uh, maybe even Dax Mill. I doubt it, but maybe even Dax Mill. And uh, so you got a couple more spread out in there. So yeah, I can see 15 touchdowns between all, all six of the five of those guys. So. Yeah, that's what I predict for Washington. I think Chase Young will be an MVP candidate, or a deep, or a, not an MVP, Defense Player of the Year candidate. Him and Sweat are going to break the dual sack record. Um, with a better secondary this year, Washington has the ability to um, Washington has the ability to actually get some covered sacks. They didn't get a lot of those last year. There's a lot of them last year. If they'd have had another half a second, they'd have got another sack. They got sacks. They had a ton of those in a lot of games. Because then you just need another half second um, of the coverage to hold up for another half second before the quarterback, uh, before someone opens up the quarterback get rid of the ball. And there, it happens so often. Like, uh, I say it happened, like, often. I, I can remember so many games like, yes, oh, oh, just hold on to another second. I just remember saying that so often. Just yelling at the TV. And I see that happening. I see 100% Washington um, having a lot better coverage and, held, and holding, team, holding uh, guys downfield. And we get a lot more coverage sacks. The sacks that we get to get that extra second to get the quarterbacks. Um, a lot of times, like, that's missed. A lot of times we don't get that. But in this situation, I think Washington's gonna, gonna get a couple more of those, especially from Chase and Montez Sweat. I think even the guys in the middle are gonna get a lot of sacks. I think we're gonna lead the league in sacks this year. I said that last year, but there's a lot of circumstances that happened last year, uh, mainly the coverage thing. But now, coverage is better. We added William Jackson. Um, Landon Collins is back and he looks good. So, yeah, there's a lot of things to look forward to with this defense. And I think uh, Jamin Davis has the opportunity to win Rookie of the Year. He's going to be in a situation where he's going to be able to just run around and tackle. He's playing behind the best defensive line in the league. Um, and all he has to do is run and tackle. If he can do that and cover linebacker or running backs or, or sometimes tight ends, effectively he'll, he'll put himself in a good position to be Rookie of the Year. And um, I think it's my video, um, and it's my podcast. So like I said, if you haven't already, subscribe to the video, subscribe to the podcast, hit the notification bell, you'll be able to get this all the time. And if you're doing this on the podcast, please subscribe. Um, I have a hundred and some subscribers already. I forgot, I totally forgot about this YouTube, this uh, uh, podcast. And uh, I'm gonna start using it again. It used to be called Redskins Rant. If you uh, remember, it used to be called Redskins Rant. Now it's called Washington Football Report. We get a new name, it may change again. But uh, that's my video. I appreciate everyone listening and, wa- and lost- watching and listening. And all my videos and vi- will be posted as podcasts from this moment on. Um, I have I found a very easy way to rip the audio and just post it. So I'm gonna do that from now on. So appreciate everyone listening and watching. Have a good one. See ya.